Hey guys, it is Sam, and in this video, we are taking a look at iOS 7.1 Beta 3, which Apple seeded two developers earlier today at the time of creating this video. So I'm going to tell you guys right off the bat, let's jump into the speed and performance improvements. It's definitely not a whole lot faster than iOS 7.1 Beta 2 now. It's very hard to tell just because I don't have Beta 2 running on any devices at this point because I've upgraded my two test devices to Beta 3. So it might be a little bit faster, but don't hold my word on that. I'm, I can't really test it, but it does feel a bit faster. However, I do feel some performance improvements, especially on my iPod Touch 5th generation because it does have that A5 processor. Just scrolling and opening apps feels extremely smooth. Smooth as butter if you want to compare it to that. Overall, there are not major performance improvements like from iOS 7.0.4 to iOS 7.1 Beta 1. There's a massive jump in performance and speed, but Beta 2 to Beta 3 definitely doesn't feel like a whole lot is different. Now, taking a look at some of the changes in this update, we've got a new slide to power off user interface. You can see when I am shutting down my iPod, you get this kind of blurred background and then you get your slide to power off slider and then a cancel button. Now, some people were saying that they don't really like the way this looks. Personally, in my opinion, I think it looks incredibly awesome, but I want to hear what you guys think. So if, let me know if you think this new slider to power off looks cool or bad, or just let me know in the comment section down below. I'd be really interested to hear what you guys are thinking. But anyway, continuing with the changes in settings, when we are changing our wallpaper, we've got new options. So if we go ahead and click choose a new wallpaper, it looks the same there, but when we are actually selecting a wallpaper, down at the bottom, we've got a new option that says motion on if it's enabled or motion off if you've tapped it to disable it. Now, this pretty much just enables or disables the parallax effect on your home screen and lock screen. So you can see when it is on and I'm moving my iPod, you can see that wallpaper is moving just like the parallax effect does. However, when it is turned off, the wallpaper will remain stationary and will not move whatsoever. So I think that's a pretty cool feature that they added that you can adjust motion right when you're setting your wallpaper. Now, next up, we've got something that's very, very very small that I wouldn't have even known if I wouldn't have read an article on the internet about these changes. So on screen now you guys can see two different screenshots of your iOS home screen and at first glance they look exactly the same. I wouldn't have even been able to tell like I said before if I wouldn't have read this article. However, if we look a little bit closer at your iOS home screen, let's go ahead and just compare the FaceTime icons. On the left, we have iOS 7.0.4 and on the right, we do have iOS 7.1 beta 3. So looking at the FaceTime icons once again, iOS 7.1 Beta 3's FaceTime icon is slightly less bright than on iOS 7.0.4. Now, once again, this is an extremely small change that I wouldn't have noticed, and I'm sure you guys wouldn't have noticed either, but I thought it's interesting that Apple is slightly tweaking their icons because they know they might be just a little bit too bright in some cases. Now, going along with that brightness factor, we have a new option in accessibility settings. So when we are there, click on reduce contrast, and then in that section, we've got a new reduce white point option. You can see when I enable that, the screen becomes much less dark than it was before. Now, it's not radically darker, but it's definitely going to help decrease the overall brightness of iOS 7. Now, other changes in the music app, when we go ahead and enable both the shuffle and repeat buttons, they get highlighted, letting you know that they're actually in use right now, and they're not just hanging out while you listen to your music. So I think that's pretty useful right there because it's a bit confusing to know, well, were those buttons enabled or weren't they? So now it's very clear to know whether you're in shuffle or in repeat. Another change in iOS 7.1 beta 3 is the new Safari text at the top of your device. So you can see it says now search web or enter website name where before I'm pretty sure, but just say enter address or something like that. So that's new. Another small change that once again, I thought some of you guys might be interested in. Now, the last change that we have discovered so far in this update is a slightly tweaked keyboard. Now, it's not big keyboard tweaks. It's very small changes. Just pretty much everything in this update is very small changes. So looking at the iOS keyboard, we've got slightly tweaked backspace and shift buttons. Now, comparing this again to iOS 7.0.4 on the left and iOS 7.1 beta 3 on the right, they are highlighted differently. Once again, this is a small change, but Apple is making a few changes maybe to make things more legible or just trying to make things better for people like you and me that are using our iOS devices. So guys, those are all the changes we have discovered so far in iOS 7.1 beta 3. If new features are discovered, be sure to check the link in the description because I'll be updating that post with new features that we discover throughout the day. I just want to get this video up, letting you guys know what the biggest changes discovered are so far. So if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure you click that like button, but maybe even more importantly, hit that subscribe button so you can be the first to know when an iOS 7 beta is released. You can know about this cool information before anybody else. So I appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I hope you did enjoy it. And I'll see you guys in my next video.